I, I'll start with you. I mean, what, what's something that somebody's doing? The most surprising solution? Surprising or interesting or something that you want people to really know about right now? So um, educating girls and empowering women is one of the top 10 solutions to climate change. Woo! And there are numbers behind this, right? When girls have an access to, uh, to education, they make very different decisions about how they want to plan their families. When women around the world have the opportunity to own land and farm, they actually farm smarter than their male counterparts because they're sharing information um, about what the best practices are instead of competing with each other. And so there are all these... That's like, sort of like asking for directions when you get lost, <laughs> right? Precisely. <laughs> so there are all these ways that we don't think about. And so one of the things that I have been working on over the last year is how do we elevate the voices of women climate leaders? There are so many women who are leading on climate, and yet when we think about who is leading on climate, we often think of like a very small handful of middle-aged white men, and their work is important, and I adore people like Bill McKibben. I'm going skiing with him this winter. I think he's just the best. But we need more voices so we can talk about the full spectrum of the aspects of the problem and also all of the nuances of the solutions and the really tricky part about how we implement them in a way that actually takes care of communities and society. Mm, so right. I'm just really excited about how do we make the leadership of this work more inclusive because that's the only way we win. If we want to solve these massive global challenges, it's just insane to think that we're not gonna use the full brain power um, of humanity and put, put that to the fore. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Anthony, I'll turn to you. Well, I guess I'll quickly say two things. Uh, one, just because we've been talking so much about the oceans, uh, there's been recent work that shows that if you grow a certain kind of seaweed and you feed it to cattle, you can reduce their methane emissions by half or more. So it's not just farm to table, it's ocean to farm to table. Okay? Um, so yes, I mean, there's so much innovation happening all around us, and most of us don't know it. And I'm going to do a quick plug for this is why you should listen to Climate Connections, because every day we tell those stories of people who are coming up with these inventions and innovations and changing their communities uh, all around you. You just don't hear it, because that's not what the news media tends to focus on. The other thing I want to just emphasize, though, is what I think is one of the most single important things that any of us can do, and that is to get organized, mm -hmm. to raise your voice as an active citizen. And as a researcher, we, I can tell you that about 71 million Americans are currently alarmed about climate change, and 21 million of them say that they would definitely, personally, get involved in a campaign to demand that political leaders take action on this. 21 million. Now let me put that into context. That is a powerful, potential political movement. And you know what other such political movements look like? It's the pro-choice or anti-abortion movement, the pro- or anti-immigration movement, the gun control movement, or the NRA. The NRA. How many members are in the NRA? About 4 million. This movement yeah. has 20 plus million people who say that they would personally get involved in such a campaign. We outnumber the IRA, or NRA, <laughs> five to one, five to one. But the difference is that they're organized. Mm -hmm. And four million people in a society of over 300 million people punches way above their weight. Why? Because they're organized. So that would be my biggest plea to all of us, is do what you can to become an active citizen. Can I just add one small thing on that, yeah. which is we're so disorganized that in the last presidential election, 10 million people who consider themselves environmentalists and were already registered to vote did not vote. Like that is like how low the bar is. 10 million. And we know how close these elections are, right? So um, there's a group called Environmental Voter Project is specifically focused on getting people who already care and are already registered actually going to the polls. It's not about winning hearts and minds. It's about activating people who already know and care. And so it's actually easier than we think it's going to be because we don't, the convincing part, like we've, like we're already winning in terms of people who are on the team of solving climate change. Just need to like, get yes, organized. get organized. Yeah. Gene, I'll give you the last word here. What's okay. the solution? Well, um, 
Let me tag on to what Ayana said. Um, I, I, I think women's engagement is hugely important um, in a political way as well. And I, I, I always, I do a lot of speeches to young people in colleges and one of my favorite lines is to talk to them about climate denial, about climate isn't a belief system, it's not a religion, it's just science, get over it. But I explained to them that if you're talking to a science denier, this is what you should say. Uh, three things. And you can repeat them after me. Are you ready? <laughs> One, climate change is real. Climate change is real. Man-made emissions have caused it. Man-made emissions have caused it. Which is why women need to rule the world. <laughs> Which is why women need to rule the world. And I, I'll tell you, there, there was a study that came out about a month ago that looked at women leaders and they kick butt on climate change compared to the men. So I rest my case. 